Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this webinar pre uh, presented by Sales Hacker. We've got an outstanding uh, guest of panelists today. I'm very excited to introduce them all. I can also tell you that if all the hard work that these guys have put in, and ladies, I should say, have put in to get this uh, done so nicely and so neatly, if even one-tenth of that effort goes into what they do on their customer success side and their sales orgs, they're going to be great people for you to work with in the future. So we're very excited to have them all here. Uh, my name is Richard Harris. I'll do some quick introductions. Um, obviously, before we move into everything, if you have questions, please put them in the chat section. We're going to hold those to the end. Additionally, we are going to be giving away two tickets to Sales Machine in New York City this week uh, in June. So if you're planning to go there or you were thinking about going and you want to try and get two free tickets, hang on till the end of the presentation because that's when we will be giving them away. So without further ado, let's introduce this uh, outstanding panel. Today we are talking about leveraging, leveraging the Salesforce app exchange to accelerate sales productivity from sales lead to closed one, which I think everybody wants. We're very lucky to have with us Sarah Houlihan, who is the Senior Product Marketing Manager at Salesforce in the Sales Cloud specifically. We have Scott Effer, the VP of Product Management at New Voice Media, a great um, solution for those of you looking on the tele telephony side of things. And of course, Rob Nisit, the Senior Product Marketing Manager from Salesforce um, Steelbrick. And if you didn't know that Salesforce bought Steelbrick, it was quite a big deal. And I think Steelbrick has done some amazing things over there. So uh, I will go ahead and be quiet at this point and turn this over to our main presenter, Scott. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us and good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you might be in the world. Um, so since part of this is a Salesforce presentation, I have the great privilege of presenting to you the Safe Harbor slide today. Um, so uh, if you are looking at any forward-looking statements, and we'll make a couple inside of the presentation, please make your buying decisions based upon currently shipping software today um, and not on everything that we say. So um, that is that for the Safe Harbor. And uh, guys, we are really excited um, to be here today and to give you um, and talk with you about some of the sales productivity things that we've seen in organizations that we dealt with um, across the world that we're helping organizations to and their teams from, to get from that lead to close. So many of these fundamental pieces have kind of these three pillars that are out there. Um, one, the first pillar around that Sarah's going to walk you through is around all that CRM data. Um, and at the core of this is a set of processes to maximize how your teams really use that connected data um, in the system. And secondly, I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about telephony. And those days of sort of cold calling out of the yellow pages are in the past with your mainframe. Um, using the right data out there for the CRM um, is core to your systems and also lots of other information and data that you have in them to make sure that you're connecting with the right person at the right time to get those important connections there. And finally, around configure price quote or CPQ, um, we're obviously going to come back and talk a lot about uh, the last steps to reduce that time to effort. Um, and get those systems to make, and that quote out the door so you can close the deal. So first, let's start with Sarah. So Sarah is going to talk to us a little bit about CRM. So Sarah, off to you. Great. Thank you. And I'll share some of the best practices I've learned from working with sales teams and from our own sales team here at Salesforce. You know, every team I talk to has one goal, and that's to hit their quota, um, to bring in more deals, to smash their quota. And this is true, like I said, for every team I talk to, from our teams here at Salesforce to our customers, and pretty much any sales rep or any manager you ask is all about the quota. Unfortunately, though, beating their quota is harder than ever. Uh, a recent study by Exactly, which is one of our app exchange partners, found that about 79% of sales reps miss their quota, and they're just they're not bringing in enough deals. And so, really, these sales teams need to be focusing on selling more and selling smarter and, and selling faster. But to do that, they have to maximize their productivity. You have to make sure that your teams are spending their time wisely and spending that time selling. And actually, reps are, spe that, uh, reps are spending about 68% of their time not selling. That's the equivalent of about three business days per week, if you don't mind moving to the next slide. Great. Yeah, reps are spending about 68% of their time not selling. And so that's the equivalent, like I said, of about three business days per week. And what are they doing with that time? If you think about if any of there are any reps on the phone, um, you're spending that time with of, of contacts in your account to call, sending emails to that leads, you know, chasing down internal approvals. And the reason they're spending so much of that time not selling is the sales processes that they have in place are broken. You know, if your reps are not working with complete time tracking down that right data that they need. 
If you're manually routing your lead to your sales reps or to your new hires, there's going to be a really big delay. And, you know, every hour, every minute that a lead comes into your system that's not followed up with, it starts to go cold. Or maybe you're relying off of spreadsheets of leads and accounts. So those manual processes come with a really big time delay that impacts the productivity. So, you know, if there's a lack of visibility into the sales process and slow sales cycles, that can cause a lot of problems as well. You know, I've talked to teams who are using Excel spreadsheets to track their sales, and they don't know until after the quarter has closed what deals are going to come in. That's a huge problem for sales, finance, for business. You know, I always like to say if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And last but not least, you know, inflexible systems are really impacting productivity. If your rep can't get the information they need out of the system, if they have to go hunt for, you know, information maybe in a marketing system, a CRM system, you know, go to another system for the product list, that's taking a lot of time. And also your reps are on the, on the road. If they can't access the information they need on the go, you know, in their mobile app, in the palm of their hand, that's going to impact their ability to serve customers while they're on the road. So with all of this kind of doom and gloom, how do you make it better? How do you make your teams more productive? And that's where I'd like to talk a little bit about Sales Cloud, which is the number one sales application. And we've been the leader in Salesforce automation by building Sales Cloud to help reps sell faster with built-in intelligence to sell smarter with a new intuitive interface we call the Lightning Experience. But it's really built to drive productivity, that new Lightning Experience. And the core of the Sales Cloud, and, and actually Salesforce as a whole, the Salesforce platform, is that reps can sell the way that they want to. It's highly customizable. So you don't need to change the way you run your business or change the way your sales process runs to fit into some system. The system changes to match your unique needs. And that's the heart of what Salesforce does. And we're focused, though, on making sure Sales Cloud covers the entire sales process from lead to cash. So, you know, I like to look at CRM as the center of a strategy that follows the path of your prospects throughout their journey. So it's you know, really important to have Salesforce automation, but also to make sure that you have a steady funnel of high-quality leads coming in through marketing automation, that your reps are working off of clean, usable, up-to-date data. So you need to have data cleansing and data insights. You need to also make sure that you know a lot of your conversations are happening in your email inbox these days, and those pretty much happen in a silo. So bringing that intelligence into your CRM and linking your partners into your CRM as well. So what you're doing with your team isn't happening in a silo outside of what the business is managing for your direct sales. And this goes all the way through, you know, closing deals with CPQ and running analytics to help measure your business and get more insight. A lot of products in this scale, but we also have the app exchange as well. So, you know, I encourage those of you who are listening looking at your strategy to maximize productivity and to fuel your reps with everything that they need, you know, take a look at the app exchange and see what's available for marketing automation, for you know, partner collaboration, for data cleansing. And really, all of these capabilities lead to amazing amount of success for our customers. You know, we talked about the goal of this webinar is around maximizing productivity. You wouldn't mind moving to the next slide. We survey our customers uh, every six months, and we want to make sure that, you know, what we're putting out there is helping them achieve their goals. And really across customers of all size, you know, from Fortune 500 companies to mid-sized companies, um, we see some great results. And uh, if you wouldn't mind moving to the next slide, please. Great. Uh, and we see about a 44% increase in sales productivity. So I talked earlier about, you know, reps spend about two-thirds of their time not selling. We're really focused on making sure that you get some of that time back that there's you know, automated processes that make the sales process even easier, move much more seamlessly, that the right data is coming in and it's served up in a useful way. Uh, we also see great increases in forecast accuracy and revenue, but also lead conversion. You know, a big part of driving more sales and driving productivity is bringing in leads, but also converting them into contacts and customers that you're working with. And that's where I'd like to kick it over to New Voice Media because a big part of converting those leads is actually talking to them. And so that's why that connection layer is very important. So with that, I'll kick it back over to New Voice Media. Thanks, Sarah. Um, that was awesome. So let's talk a little bit about data. Um, and all of us know sort of that focal importance of what data does for us and how um, we help teams make decisions. But again, in that core with where Salesforce has it, all that CRM data, but it's a lot of data that's around it. The data, that, um, the data that exists in your accounting systems, the data that exists in your front-end systems, 
and help your teams that are out there in the field trying to close the deal. And really with all those important pieces of the data, we start to make the right decisions, create the right dial list, create the right presence that you have there inside of the system. And it's not just um, finding the best person, but finding the best time to support in this global environment. You know, there's a story that we've all heard from Mark say, you know, this evolution of technology from uh, the mainframe into client servers, into cloud computing, and then this age of the customer that's there. And telephony has evolved at a, as well, just evolved a little bit at a slower pace there. And um, it's evolved at this thing. And when we look at the what telephony has done, we really see cloud and telephony as it sort of go hand in hand. And this evolution of how we can relate to this data, it's inevitable that if we're going to succeed, if organizations are going to succeed, they have to have that sort of in their place create a better customer experience. It evolved to a place to, for the need, and we've seen it ha for this need to create the opportunity to make organizations communicate better for the prospects and how to actually have to make them into happy customers. And finally, it comes to the right tools. And you mentioned it again, Sarah, the, tool that, the tools that are out there, but these integrated tools, the integrated amount of data, the integration in one environment to be able to bring those tools together to not only give a great experience for the end user, which is really important uh, uh, to all of us, but fundamentally, how do we make it um, so that they're happy and that they, we're actually gleaning a lot of information from that to get the right insights around this information there? When we look at the insights, there's core pieces to us. Um, as you look at data, and I've often discussed this when I'm talking with customers about the journey, um, um, our customers, we're talking about their customer's journey. The journey from when they pick up a phone, the journey from when someone calls into them. What was the experience like? How does their workforce manage that? How does um, the right teams have the right information in the right place? So they know how things are going and where they're going well, or maybe if they're not going well. Where are there the challenges, the bottlenecks in an organization that are preventing you from going? Um, understanding what that journey looks like comparative. So as we look at analytics and what Salesforce has done with analytics as well as analytics in general, the key to having this is how do we look at that data to bring all those points back together to sort of have that clear kind of 360 degree view of what that experience is like for our teams and for our customers and that experience that happens for our productivity. And I want to leave you with a story um, on our, um, from my side. And the story is about a large telco customer that we work with Salesforce to close. And uh, they had some pretty lofty and aggressive revenue goals um, that are out there. And they were looking for a, basically um, an integrated solution, an integrated dialer, um, integrated with all of their data and their CRM to better um, serve and to better call out to all of their prospects and create these customer environments. And because of this existing, this existing in the cloud from all these solutions, we were able to actually help them to accomplish it because it was two fully integrated solutions that came together. And within 16 weeks, they had 250 reps running on a system in seven locations around the world. They were a true global rollout, and they weren't stopping there. They had, they're about at that $450 million target um, with about 450 reps. And right now, they're heading up to that $1.1 billion, and they have to have an organization that will grow with them. And they increased their connection rates by 40%, and they got better transparency, better transparency to report back on what is actually making those improvements and to get that feedback into the system. And they're able to do it because they replaced an on-premise solution. They were able to do it because they had a solution that was integrated with the core systems that they that they work with in their back office and their front. And all of this journey, to the, this journey that they went on to get to the cloud made it possible for them. So after all these great connections and after you have all these great interactions, what we want to do is really focus on what is the right tools and the right data to make that close. So I'm going to pass it over to Rob. Go ahead, Rob. Thank you, Scott. So. You know, one of the things that we've noticed at Steelbrick, and it was incredibly surprising to me when I started working there, is that while companies have invested a huge amount of money and time and resources into building out their CRM and integrating the right tools into there, such as new voice media, so you can connect with your customers quickly and have visibility through the beginning of your sales process. And on the other side, in the back office, building out systems like Oracle, SAP, and Sage in order to effectively provision orders, track invoices, and manage kind of your back office accounting, there was this huge gap in this last, um, you know, sort of mile of the sales cycle where reps were going back to basics and using kind of old school tools like Excel to generate their quotes, um, you know, PDFs to put proposals together, Word to manage contracts, and email is kind of your baseline of communication for all these different things. And that causes a number of different problems for reps, for managers, and for the business as a whole, the least of which being... Um, an incredibly slow response to customer inquiries because this process is so manual and takes so long. 
but also, you know, abilities or difficulties around controlling pricing and levels of discounts, having visibility into the overall sales cycle so you can see your, you know, opportunities inside of CRM, but start to lose track of it once you get into the quoting process because you're not able to see through that barrier of Excel and Word to really see what's in the pipeline and what's actually going out to customers. And no real control over process. Um, making sure that product rules are being followed and that quotes that are going out to customers are actually accurate, technically valid solutions. And so the result of that is, um, on the business side, this lack of visibility, this lack of process control, and from the customer's perspective, their expectations really aren't being met. They're not getting the services that they expect, they're not getting the quotes accurately, and the proposals that they're getting don't really look very good. And so the solution for that is really to find the right tool and build that into your sales process overall. And that's why um, at Stillbrick, we're incredibly excited to be part of the Salesforce family because we're able to deliver this process from the initial lead all the way through to billing and collection right inside of the Salesforce platform, giving you the kind of visibility, trust, um, and process control that you expect as part of a Salesforce product. So if we could jump to the next slide. The result of that um, is, is pretty impressive, starting with the ability to actually get accurate sales quotes out the door very, very quickly by having sales reps use the familiar Salesforce interface to build the quotes and building the product rules and logic directly into that so that you know as a sales manager or as a business manager that every quote that's going out to the customer is actually accurate and technically valid. And of course, anybody that's listening from the marketing team We'd be incredibly excited to know that the part of the solution is really being able to create branded proposals and make sure that everything that's going out to customers matches the brand look and feel that your company expects. So you're able to just sort of elevate this whole process to be much more professional. And on the back end, you can fully automate the quote to cash process and have the sort of visibility that you need in order to effectively manage your business. As you can see, how things are flowing through from the beginning of your pipeline to what quotes are going out the door all the way down to what your invoice status looks like and you know, what your monthly collection process is looking like using standard Salesforce dashboards and reports. And so the result of that is, is some pretty impressive levels of customer success, um, starting with the ability to actually reduce your approval times by 34%, and pardon me, the labels on this slide look a, a little bit off. Um, so it was a 34% reduction in approval times an ability to actually get from quote to order 70% faster than before, and actually an increase of 80% in terms of quote accuracy. And so the result of that in total is a 50% improvement in your quote to cash ROI, comparing that against sort of this manual process or existing CPQ system, and then moving this all into Salesforce and having that level of control, visibility, um, and expectation setting that you get um, out of Salesforce. So um, with that, I'll turn it back to Scott to bring it all together. Thanks, Rob. Um, so finally, what we wanted to do basically is at the end of this, you know, it's been about 20 minutes and we're talking about these three key pillars that are there, this entire process that happens uh, around this. And there are many tools that fit into many different sections and many different pillars that we have for these components. Um, but from your CRM to this interactions that we have with your prospects, to that ability to how you make the final leap or that final ability to close the deal and then make them and turn them into customers is really where we want to focus and where we focus with our customers in helping them to improve their productivity. Um, as we look at this and as we get a core understanding of these processes, we help our teams have this valuable data and it really comes back to that data. How is it connected and how do you make all these interactions, whether it be emails, quotes, phone calls, get that full 360 degree view of your customer to really close the deal. Richard, that's it from our side. Um, we'll test it back to you for any other questions. So the value of a mute button. Yes. Um, so there's actually a couple of questions that have come through that I think are really pertinent. And, you know, it's, I know we've got about 10 minutes, so I think we'll have enough time for, for each person to give their opinion. Um, one of the questions that's come through, and, and it was sort of generic, it didn't really speak towards uh, any one of the solutions we talked about today, but is what size do you need to um, be? What size does the sales org need to be to really start to see the ROI on efficiency, right? Like if you're a, 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 an early stage startup with, um, you know, four sales reps, um, you know, does quote to close really, you know, make them that much more efficient? Or is it really, you know, once you get to that 10, 12, 15, 
30, 100 size sales team. Um, and, and I think that question really could be asked for all three of the, the solutions we've talked about today. So I'll just sort of, you know, maybe Scott, if you want to answer first, we'll go from there. Sure. So um, one of the key things that we look at, especially when we talk about um, managing this process and telephony in the cloud, um, and, and really how it comes down to managing the processes from your inside teams, your outside teams, um, a lot of it, a lot of times I get asked the question about, well, we're not a global company, um, or we're not an enterprise company, so does it make sense for us to have this? And I think, especially in telephony, um, one of the things about that a lot of people realize with, in, with the cloud is they, they can start getting something up and running and going pretty quick, and then they start to see value in that. So I think one of the questions I typically pose back is around the, your, your value to growth and, and, your, and your ability to have that capability for growth that's there. That's one of the big pieces I see. I, I'm always for the starting small um, and integrated again into your processes because I think establishing that, that process where you can have that view of a customer and understand the value that you're having um, with the conversations that you're connecting with them um, and how that's affecting your sales processes is, is pretty key regardless of um, what organization you're at. I mean, I think everyone... Um, whether you're calling in for a service from Comcast, you're calling in to Bob's surf shop, um, if they know you better and they, and they have the information about you, it just makes your experience better. It helps you to be um, more personal with those people. So that's typically where I see it. Thank you. I, I, and I would agree. Like, you've got, you've got to start small and recognize those, those many wins add up to much bigger wins, um, even if they're not always immediate. You know, the win will come over time and it'll be a very, very worthwhile uh, thought. Sarah, any thoughts from you? I mean, you know, look at Salesforce. I think I'd, I'd be willing to bet 90% of our attendees are on Salesforce. Um, if not, that's not a bad thing for you either. But um, <laughs> what yeah. what do you see from the sales cloud and everything that, that you're um, working with these days that really helps people grasp that more? Yeah, and I think, you know, going to the question, too, about, you know, we're five, ten salespeople, is it something that we can really see gains from? You know, you mentioned that there's a lot of Salesforce customers, but a lot of all sizes. You know, we, we do have the big logos that we try out at Dreamforce, but we also have a lot of small businesses and mom-and-pop shops. And I think, you know, for those teams, it's incredibly critical to try and realize any gains in productivity because, you know, having worked at startups myself, everyone is wearing 10 different hats. You know, your CEO is not just your CEO, but they are, you know, probably in charge of all finance and a lot of hiring and HR and, you know, your salespeople are responsible for the entire company number. Um, you know, even though there are five or 10 of them, they're doing a lot of that customer interaction, a lot of that closing business. So I think, you know, it's incredibly critical there to try and realize any productivity gains. Uh, because every individual person is taking on so many different roles. I mean, your salespeople are probably acting as your account managers and probably, you know, even your customer success team as well. And so I think also when you're looking at a small company like that, the value of a customer um, is critical. You know, one customer is a big part of your business. And so making sure that you can see, you know, what deals you're bringing in, um, you know, being able to analyze what's going to come in, the health of those deals, you know, reach out for help when you need it, and also for managing your customers, you know, understanding your customer satisfaction, how they're doing, um, you know, being able to make sure that you keep them as customers and you keep that portfolio of customers growing. So I would say, you know, it's almost even more critical for small teams to start putting something in place because every person is, you know, working multiple roles and every customer has a really big impact on how the business is doing. You know, Sarah, Great. one of the things you said okay. was um, needing to, to kind of capture every efficiency that you can in the process, and then that really rings true for me, especially on the CPQ side, where you can have um, so much time wasted switching between applications, and then even more so if you have to go back and correct mistakes, and then that starts to become a kind of customer relationship issue as well. So I think there's actually a ton of advantage to, to getting that process formalized and integrated into your overall Salesforce system as soon as you can. And the last thing that I'd add is, you know, one of the great advantages of a cloud-based solution is, you know, you can buy it when you're small and just buy the licenses that you need. And then, of course, it can grow with you um, as your business grows over time. Great. Thanks for adding that. We've got, uh, we've got one more uh, really nice question that I'm going to go ahead and put out. And um, you know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll let, uh, let you guys decide how to answer it. But 
Uh, with the CRM being the core of most sales organizations, how exactly is sales cloud contributing to a better sales process in terms of productivity? Salesforce, you know, we know is, is great, right? You've got to have it. Um, but it's also only as good as the data you get into it. So what about the sales cloud really helps make that more accurate? Yeah, I can I can take that one first, and then we can have um, Rob and Scott jump in too. So, um, a couple of different things that I'd like to hit on there. So, the first question was about you know making that sales process more effective, and that's why I would encourage you know whomever asked the question or on the call who's interested to take a look at all of the workflow automation that you can do with Sales Cloud as well. Um, you know, so we talked about you know manual approval processes and how long it can take to you know email your manager for you know, pricing approval or expense approval, you can build all of that into the system. So that's, you know, one of the core tenets of all of our products is it being heavily customized or, you know, very customizable. Um, so that's why I would encourage you to take a look at, you know, what do you want your sales process to look like? You know, are you, are your reps spending time emailing managers for approval? Okay, build a workflow around that. Or is there a step in your sales cycle where, you know, before you move it to the next stage, you need to check some information in another system, build a process around that that surfaces that information automatically for your rep. So I think that's one thing that I would look at for process automation. And I totally agree with you on the data. I kind of feel like it's field of dreams. You know, if you build it, they will come. If you have the right data, your reps will use it. Um, and that's really key for um, adoption as well. And so, um, you know, I've had, you know, I've talked to companies before where they say, our data is terrible, we want to move to sales cloud, how do you make our data better? And, um, you know, that's where I would encourage you to look at our data.com product. Um, it was originally Jigsaw and was acquired by Salesforce, and that's where we partner with Dun & Bradstreet to make sure that we have up-to-date data um, that's funneled right into the system. So there's a couple different things you can do there. So you can, you know, as you're looking at the data that you have, uh, clean that data and make sure it's up to date. And this is something actually that we, we see a lot of um, new customers do before they migrate over to Sales Cloud. They want to start fresh. They want to start with clean, usable data. So they'll do that as a part of their implementation process. And also something that current customers do on an ongoing basis to make sure, you know, data goes bad at an alarming rate. If you think about how often people change jobs, change phone numbers, change email addresses, um, so it's really not a one-time thing. So a lot of people do that as an ongoing process to make sure the data is usable. And then you also want to make sure that reps are getting insights, you know, that when they come to their CRM, it's not just something that they're filling out data to make their manager happy, that they're getting something that helps them do their job. Um, and there's a lot that we have, particularly in the new Lightning experience that helps around that. Um, my absolute favorite is, is account insights. So when you go to your homepage as a rep, you know, it knows you know, what accounts and what uh, contacts are assigned to you, and services relevant information. So I can, you know, maybe, for example, I'm prospecting into Nike that's assigned to me. I can see, you know, what press releases they've put out, if they've had any leadership changes, their financial results. Um, you know, so that way, not only am I getting the data about who to contact and, you know, what to call and what number to call or what email to use, but also something to talk about with them. So it's not just about, you know, building a process, but making sure that, like you said, the, the data and the insights and information is there as well to make it something people actually want to use. And, and I'll just add to that, Sarah. I, sorry. I, one of the things I think that's pretty key around it is as we look at um, the data part, I think it's pretty crucial. And one of the things that we look at a lot is if you look this morning, there's 2,996 2, apps on the App Exchange, um, and we're very honor and proud to be one of them. Um, and one of the main reasons that we so tightly couple our data into the infrastructure and don't take a lot of the stuff off platform that we don't have to um, is primarily focused around how we make more value out of the data and what that experience is, is for people. And so when, if you look at some of the statistics, and my, my day is a little bit dated, so this might be even higher today, but um, over 90% of um, uh, app exchange app, or customers that Salesforce have more than one app exchange app installed inside of them, and it gets higher and higher um, uh, value to them as they get more and more applications that are there. And so as we look at that information, as you look at it, all that data um, somewhat from the system sits in a silo, but on one platform to be able to then you get more insights around, again, what does it look like? What is that journey? What is the experience? How was your, um, how was it actually something that when you called out to someone, 
How did they um, feel connected with you? How did they, you make this a more personalized and your rep make a more personalized experience? Um, and how did you know who to call next? How did you know who were the right, with the right people to call in the right time? And so as we look at all of that, and especially at New Voice Media, when we look at the information that's inside of the systems that we have, we don't want to just look at our own data. Our data is valuable. It's valuable to us, and we think it's valuable to our customers. But it's also one of the things that we say, well, how can we make this better um, with an ecosystem of partners that are out there to, to support it and that CRM data being the core? That's awesome. Thank you for that insight. Um, we are starting to go over on time, so I want to go ahead and wrap it up. I know there were a couple of more questions, um, but I want to be conscious of our of our presenters and guests today because um, they've been so gracious with their time. Thank you all for a fantastic session and some great Q&A at the end. Those were really solid. Um, I do have one last thing. Obviously, we have um, Sales Machine coming up in New York, um, and we have a winner for the two tickets to Sales Machine, which is uh, Stephen Wilkins. Thank you for joining us today, and a free shout-out and plug to you for Parsley.com. So uh, feel free to go take a look at that. And again, thank you to everyone who attended, and thank you to our, our panelists for joining in and providing some awesome insights. If there's anything else one of the panelists would like to add, I'm, I'm more than happy to give you a moment to, to say something. I just wanted to say, for those of you who did not win the sales machine tickets, you should definitely check it out. Um, I will be there. I think it's going to be a great event with speakers like Ariana Huffington, Billy Bean. Um, you know, you'll hear even more about how to better manage and run your sales teams. Um, so I'm attending. I hope you all will, too. Great. I'll be there as well. Look forward to seeing you. Well, thank you, everybody, and have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you happen to be, or morning. Take care.